Hey, what's up, Val? How's it going? I'm just looking at us. We look like we're very music industry today. That's Black right. Tees. Black no tees color. and chains. <laughs> oh, yeah. We both have chains on. I've got silver. You've got yeah, gold. Yeah. Oh, no. Yours are silver, too. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. We're more similar than you think, Valerie. We are. We have more in common. Two Asians on a podcast. <laughs> Who would have guessed we have things in common? <laughs> it's a certain kind of... Uh, person that decides that they want to host a podcast and now here's two of them oh no are we those people no no i mean yes we definitely but, are uh, how was your weekend how was everything gone it was nice it was good we were both at the jai wolf show shout out yes. to our pal sajib yes yeah, sajib i'm gonna guilt him into getting on this this show get that man on here <laughs> in no time uh yeah it was fun we got to check out the greek theater it was really nice it's like perfect weather right now yeah and actually while we're talking about sajib maybe i'll make the note to anyone listening out there if you have been a listener of all this noise and you like what we're doing and there's certain people you want to see or guests that you're like please get this person to talk about mm. whatever it is that they are going to talk about let us know we yeah. have an instagram we're at all this noise Pod? Is that our Instagram? All this noise pod. pod. <laughs> Momentarily just forgot uh, what our Instagram the... <laughs> is. Not a good moment to plug. And uh, make sure to, no, it's fine. You're, you're doing great. Uh, make sure to email us as well. Yeah, uh, drop us a line. All this noise pod at Gmail. Yes, that's us. We have yes. ideas, people, yep. and we like you guys. So hit us up. Let us know. We're also on the internet as well. You can find us on mm -hmm. the All This Noise Instagram. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. We haven't said that before, so I feel like we no. should say it. And also, if you're a podcast listener, you can rate and review us. Th that's an important <laughs> thing, right? Please and thank you. And we're and Valerie and I are allowed to write one good review about ourselves at least once, right? Because everyone yeah. does that when they start. But then after your friends and family have done that, we need yeah, you, help the us community. not look embarrassing <laughs> and write us a nice review. <laughs> okay. Anyways, enough of the plugging. Do all of that. We would have really appreciated it. Hey, but we've gotten such great feedback from everyone uh, so far who has listened. We appreciate yeah. all the texts, all the kind words and comments. Yes. That keeps us motivated and really happy. So thank you. And today, we have a great guest. Kalina um, Zanders came through. Yeah. She did the darn thing. She did. Kalina is so awesome. I feel like early on in this episode, I mentioned it as well, but I feel like we both have known her mm -hmm. in the music industry for a long time. Mm -hmm. And another great example of someone that... You just love to see succeed after however many years you catch up with them. And this was a great opportunity to hear a little bit more about her origins, how she got her start in dance music and what she's up to now and kind of like the journey that has happened in between, which is quite a bit. There's yes. quite a bit that's happened to her. Well, say. she is a vocalist and amazing, talented singer. Yes. Um, and, you know, mostly known for her work here in the dance music space and singing on other people's records. But as we've learned through this uh, conversation there's been quite the metamorphosis in her career where she's now getting more into DJing yes. writing her own stuff she signed a record deal for her music yes um, she got signed as an agent uh, she got signed with an agency to perform yes. as a DJ and singer I mean it's just like a great time for her right now it is yeah I feel like every once in a while so far we've had some episodes with artists who are also kind of coming from the vocalist side of things and their perspective is always really interesting because they just come with such a different role in this music space that we all know and love. So I think it's a really interesting one. So without further ado, let's chat with Kalina. Let's go. Good? Are we good? Okay. So I have to ask because you kind of brought it up. Mm. You said you're a fan of cats, birds, and squirrels. Yes. Very specifically. Yes, yes. I need to know more about this trio of animals that you love. Okay. Well, <laughs> I consider myself to be the black Snow White. No, yeah. really? Yeah, I really do. Yeah, because squirrels. Well, I have a park near my house, and I can I feed them nuts every single day or every morning there, or every morning or afternoon when I walk. Wow. And they come up to you. And they will eat out of your hand. Really? Yep. Yep. I, I recently brought my friend. And I, I'm a little bit too um, scared to pet them. Yeah. But my mm -hmm. friend did. not gotten that far yet. <laughs> no, no. I haven't pet them. My friend did, though. Wow. Just the other day. Literally. Oh. Um, she's like, oh, no. Squirrels, I love them. I'm like, I'm, I'm, like oh, I'm the squirrel. I'm Snow White. Okay. <laughs> like, we were having a Snow White off. <laughs> and, like, I was like, Okay, yeah, like, sure, you pet them. And so uh, she had a nut in her hand, and then she does this little thing where she, like, sprinkles them on the ground, and then okay. they, like, come up to her, 
And then she like lays them on her hand. <laughs> she lays them on her strategy. hand. strategy. Yeah. I was like, well, I haven't filmed. And oh she sprinkled them on her hand. And then it like got like up to her hand, <laughs> ate the nuts, and then put its two paws on the side <gasps> of her fingers. And then she like started stroking it with her. Oh my God. Um, they bonded. They really yeah. bonded. I like was like, oh, okay. Yeah. That... <laughs> like this thing is about to come home with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah it was, it's... I've never heard of that. Yeah. I had never heard of anyone yeah. petting a squirrel at a, like a no. park. Or that's yeah. seems... They're so skittish. So I could never, yeah. I'm, they, I, yeah. I've like seen people like toss food at them. They kind of yeah. get around yeah. you. Yeah. But wow. well, these ones are pretty, <laughs> they're pretty um, bold. Are, I would they, say. are they like chunky squirrels? Yeah, there's all sizes. All <laughs> I was sizes. gonna say it's it very sounds like they get a lot of food. <laughs> there's always some of like in a pack of squirrels. There's always a few that are the the, the ones chompers. that eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's there's the top dogs and then there's the the little babies. They range. They range. Wow. Yeah. So okay, when, did, yeah. when how long have you known that you've had this like acute uh, <laughs> relationship to animals? Like, well, my mom told me stories. Um, she said that I would always go up to the dogs that seemed the meanest. Or that would be barking, like, on the fence or whatever. And she said I would just go up to them and, like, they would just be disarmed. Wow. Whoa. That's a bomb story. So that's facts. That's I was awesome. going to say, so it's a lifelong skill <laughs> yeah. that you have. Yeah. You heal the yeah. angry animals. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, I love that. That's yeah. such a good, like, fact about you. <laughs> so, <laughs> random, so are you thinking about, like, maybe later on in your life becoming a professional animal pacifier? Well, <laughs> yeah. If the music thing doesn't work out, you know. Honestly, I used to want to be a vet. A vet. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, that. I don't think I, I'm too squeamish right now, so I mean, I couldn't, you know, do any surgeries. I could just like kind of. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what I could possibly do, but um, maybe like a a cat sanctuary. Okay. Yeah, like yeah. Where, always a dream. Like a rescue, but maybe it's like a thing where people can come and like, yeah, like get healed and like, yeah, like have a bunch of cats around them. Oh, kind of like um. Who's that guy in Key West? Ernest Hemingway. Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah. has the the cat house, and that's yeah. the birth of the six toed cats. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, they get yeah. like they Wait. birth a different kind of cat. Yeah, I love that. Six I toes. also didn't know that. Yeah. Who yeah. knew I was gonna learn all these animal facts? Hemingway today? was a cat guy. <laughs> yeah. He was a yeah. big cat guy. That's so cute. Uh, you know, that's that's good that you're using your you want to use your powers for good because yeah. there's a lot of people that if they had your gift. Mm. They would definitely try to scam celebrities into becoming some sort of oh, animal guru. I thought you were going to say, like, build a squirrel oh. army or something. Well, you know, because there's probably... <laughs> <laughs> squirrel <Your> army. Face, <laughs> <you're> like... <laughs> I don't know what you could accomplish with a squirrel <laughs> army, though, you know? I don't... Who I don't knows? Know. I mean, you can do anything do these days. You a decent amount of damage. You, you could at least train them to do cool stuff. Also, like, yeah. unexpected. Yeah. Like, catch people off guard. Anyways, yeah. yeah. Before and I take us off the edge, of no, that's the, like, amazing. Unhinged it's... animal. Wait, stories. I didn't say anything about the birds because the birds are oh, yeah. really. Yeah, tell us about birds. That's really key too. Please. Cool. Um, I have. I think it's because I'm a singer, and I think I love high frequencies. Or actually, I don't love high frequencies, but I just love music. Yeah. So like, there's. I always feel like birds are like calling me. Not like not in a, a crazy way, but like just <laughs> like I will. One will tweet, and I just will stop. I'm just like like relish in the tweet yeah mm. like you're very attuned to like <laughs> yeah. their sound yeah yeah like, i mean i, I feel yeah. like i've not, i still have yet to get into bird watching uh, as a hobby i'm saving that for later in life okay I think. yeah <laughs> when i'm older yeah yeah <laughs> like i need new hobbies yeah but i feel like the more you learn about it the more you're like in tune with what they're saying yeah how the different oh. species are communicating i talk back to them <laughs> 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 talking Okay. Anyways, that, we can talk about yeah, more yeah, yeah. about bird watching and bird noises. Later. I want to keep this going. No, I know Val's <laughs> trying to keep us on track, but I got I'm so many bird best, questions. But I'm personally very interested. Ba in Val, animals, I can't so. wait till you're in the bird watching phase of your, that era. I literally have had this thought before, where I'm like, "That's going to be a hobby for my later." Like, like I know so I will like be birds. into it. I just love animals. Animals, yeah. I yeah, love yeah, animals same. of all sorts, and I love same. learning the funny quirks about animals. So same. same. Well, thank you for sharing that because yeah, you're welcome. I, I was I was gonna say as you were telling us about it being like a lifelong thing, what I find is really interesting is you have like such a powerful sound mm. and like persona, but I've always gotten a really gentle energy from you. Oh, good. So good. I like to hear that good. you. <laughs> good. <laughs> and I feel like animals respond to that, so yeah. that's the connection that's happening in awesome. my head. Yeah, that's good but, to know. Yeah, absolutely. 
But I I'm, second that, by the way. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I probably wouldn't have said it as as nice as Valerie, as yeah. you know, <laughs> articulate before, <laughs> as she was. And before we started recording, I was telling you, you're someone I've known for years now. Mm. I don't even know how many years at this point, but quite a few. Yeah. At least seven, like five. Seven? I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> but it's nice to like actually have a chance to sit down with you because I feel like I've known about you and your career and all the music that you've been releasing, but... I like want to know more about where you got your start mm -hmm. and like how you got onto this path of music. So tell us a yeah. little bit about where you grew up and how you kind of found yeah. singing. Yeah, first. Um, so yeah, I I grew up in San Jose, um, really kind of boring place, but um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it was pretty pretty boring. But um, from what I know of myself, I pretty much used to always just like sing to myself as if it were like my second like language mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like people used to, like my my family they'd be like get on the table and like sing that song and i'd be like why like i didn't understand <laughs> that i was like singing out loud and they can hear it ah. you know what i mean i was very like um i would just sing uh -huh. you know and um i was actually really really shy so really yeah very like t like terrified in a lot of ways oh. and of people and and i mean people are terrifying but you know what i mean <laughs> mm -hmm. just yeah. as from as, from a kid and and then um, my mom, like, slowly started putting me in musical theater, mm -hmm. like, when I was, like, mm -hmm. eight. I think I was eight years old. And even then, I didn't want to perform. But once I got on stage, it was, like, it felt like I felt, like, this warm energy and light. And, you know, once I was there, after crying it, all the time, like, I really loved it. And wow. um, so I, I would say that's, like, kind of, like, my first early musical when I found my abilities as a singer. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it seems like, yeah. it sounds like you had the abilities before you even recognized well, it. My grandma, she was a, a piano player and a choir leader. So uh, um, I didn't, I, she actually died when I was two. So I didn't even really know that part. Oh, wow. But, you know, I, I really feel that's where I got like my musical like gifts. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I was going to ask, it was your rest of your family musical at all yeah besides your grandma grandma my dad he do you know luther vandross oh yeah of course okay he doesn't i don't okay he's very shy too but mm. he sounds exactly like luther vandross oh really yeah wow yeah and so, so a very like, deep voice oh yeah <laughs> like, he could really get into it and like again he, he was just singing i think that's maybe why i got this sort of like you know, just natural singing ability, like not thinking about it because he does that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Wow. I was I was always interested because, well, now it makes sense because I've, uh, you know, I went to school for theater in college. Oh, really? And yeah, I know. Cool. I'm a musical, musical theater, theater kid. No way. Yeah, a little bit, but mainly, mainly drama. But like, I could identify as soon as I met you, uh, <laughs> I had kid. the vibe. I was like, yes, theatrical. And uh, it's just, you, you kind of know when people come from that kind of a, background yeah, you know yeah, but awesome. i'm kind of curious uh val and i were kind of you know kind of um as we wanted to ask you you know why dance music like of all mm, the because it know. seems like you're so <laughs> talented and and so mm -hmm. vivacious and you have such a great you know energy around you that isn't it really isn't typical to a lot of you know dance yeah. music stuff it seems like you could have been on broadway or, or yeah you, this talent could have been in other areas as well right. so i'm just curious I mean, what not to jump ahead you? too much. Yeah, yeah what drew yeah. you down this yeah. path a little so bit more? Yeah, so interesting. Um, well, I was in rock music. I was in a rock band. And oh, cool. yeah. What age was that? Um, I was like 19, 20. Cool. Yeah, 1920. And not in 1920. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how old I am? <laughs> guys, I was. Um, I'm like, why? But First rock band. Beautiful. Like, thank yeah. you, guys. I'll be like this for another 100 years. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so I was in a rock band. And in college, and we, I was doing musical theater as well. I uh -huh. minored in musical theater. Okay. And uh, where'd so, you go to school? Uh, San Jose State. Okay. Nice. And so, so did my mom. Oh, really? Yeah. <gasps> She's crying. Well, yeah. <laughs> like Kendrick's <experience. laughs> Um. So, yeah, she, yeah, I did that. And then um, it, in, in my band, like, I thought we were going to, like, take over the world as you would. And you're in a band. I had, like, a red mohawk oh, leading God. the charge. Amazing. You know? And mm -hmm. we were trying to be, like, Red Hot Chili Peppers meets Incubus meets like Rage Against Machine. So I used to rap and rock out. Whoa. And nice. um, yeah, like we, I wanted to move to LA and like they, you know, did and didn't. It wasn't like a strong passion. Mm. Also, you know, the bass player got like 
his girlfriend pregnant and I was like, ah, got to go. <laughs> life oh. stuff. Yeah, life yeah. stuff. So, um, yeah, I went, um, came to L.A. and I went to Musicians Institute and I still had the idea that I was going to do music, but like I didn't quite like know how. And I just was kind of like finding myself doing yoga, like, you know, got all the L.A. things that you do, become a <laughs> vegan or vegetarian, all those like meditating and like whatever. <laughs> Which turned out to be very valuable, but, you know, I'm just saying I had the L.A. way. Um, <laughs> and then um, I think it was I was working at Trader Joe's and I one of my friends there, like, he's like, oh, do you like do you like dance music? And I really honestly didn't because <laughs> I, it was just a different world. You know, I'm coming from rock and like yeah. really musical things and songwriting and musical theater and all those things are very, you know, um, it's a lot of music, you know, and yeah. a lot of lyrics and things. So I was like, no, it's like this something in the distance of my head that I would never, ever, ever participate in. You know, <laughs> up until yeah. that point, were you still kind of in the rock music trajectory um, in your head? Um, or, no. I didn't know. I yeah. thought, I, honestly, I thought I was going to become like a guitar player or something like. Okay. Yeah, because I I kind of was lost after my band. I didn't know. Right. I didn't. I was the lead singer, and I just didn't know what that would shape into. You mm -hmm. know. And, um, yeah, I didn't have, like, a, a strong, like, I'm going to be this, like, artist or whatever. It was just yeah. kind of, like, this overall general thing. Yeah, yeah. so you were open. Very yeah. open, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I met my friend, and then he was like, um, would you want to, uh, would you ever want to sing over a dance track? And I was like, sure, like, I'll try it, whatever. And then I got in the studio with Sunburn. And, oh, nice. Yeah, and I, like, sang for 30 minutes. And he gave me some mushroom cookies. <laughs> and then like, and I was like, peace out. And wow. then, like, that track ended up being, you know, the a really huge track, like, the next year. So nice. it was kind of... What was the name of that one again? Um, California. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, but I, I will say, though, maybe, like, a year before that. Do you know, do you remember P Money from uh, New Zealand? Mm. He was, like, a, I, I guess he was a DJ and, like, kind of like a... He was big over there. Okay. Mm. I, yeah, I remember doing, bell. like, do you remember Maya Vanya? Is that their name? Maya Vanya? Whatever. They're a New Zealand <laughs> artist. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I did sort of do, like, a, a kind of a dance track, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't something significant, and I didn't even really, like, care. You know what I mean? Or yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. care before either. Even when I met Summer, and I was like, cool, dude. You know? <laughs> and then, yeah, that track became big, and then I think that's when, you know, I got into dance music yeah. in a way that was really, like, you know, this is it. So yeah. that was around yeah. like 20, what, 2015? 2014, yeah. 14, 2014 15? and then, yeah, on. Yeah. yeah. That's when I, but that's when I met Sunburn and that's when he was kind of yeah. Yeah, on the way up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was a great time. Yeah, it was an cr incredible time, like crazy. I mean, at first I, it was hard adjusting, to be honest. Yeah. Like, yeah, because then, you know, then everyone's like trying to get you to be on a track then me not understanding the world really. And then I actually put up a big wall at first because I was just like, I don't I don't even know how to write dance music, you know. I was just like, what is this top line business? What is why, why is it only like four lines? Like, what? I write songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was right. very yeah. very like not understanding. But I'm sure you know works. like obviously classic dance music from the 90s that we all knew from the radio yeah. that had R&B singers basically come in. Sure provide the top line and they were never really credited. Oh my God. Or, you yeah. know, there's a bunch of examples so like Black Box that. or like, you know, Robin S obviously is someone who we know now mm -hmm. from, but there's like a lot of that history, right? With dance music. And during that time, I actually didn't know that. Like, you yeah. Know, Cause I wasn't in dance music. So like, yeah. I didn't even know until like later until like, you know, I started taking this journey and being on more, more tracks and stuff. And just kind of not that I was treated I wasn't, I was always treated nicely, but I did notice like, you know, like, oh, we're just going to have a buy out here and like, you know, basically seeing yeah. me as like a, you know, a sample pack, you know? Right. I was going to say, yeah. cause I mean, like, it's such an interesting, I'm sure looking back on it, you're yeah. like, you know, you see all the moments where you're like, okay, I learned that lesson there, totally. learned that thing there. But like, what was it like? Like, what were the first things that you remember like running into as far as like learning lessons that mm -hmm. you would share with someone? maybe starting where you like were then dancing. yeah yeah um i think it was probably like negotiation mm. and like you know contracts and then like value of like what you're doing and because i didn't realize that you know habitually djs they find a singer and then you sing on their track and then they blow up 
<laughs> right. Like, sick. Yes. And, you know, I didn't really understand that that was, like, just kind of the way of the, that's what they did, you mm-hmm. know? And so I think, I think what I would say is, like, you know, you have to find, you have to value, put value on what you're doing and then know yeah. that you can also somehow build a career out of it, too. You know what I mean? I think it was just mostly, like, people just trying to pay you penny, pennies for you to, to get your voice. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, yeah. yo, I'm, like, setting people's careers off i'm not you know it's like that's how it felt you know so i think yeah yeah i think it's just like um and i'm not in a and it's not i don't feel like bad about it i mean i did there was a point where i felt really low about it but i don't Mm -hmm. feel like like i got screwed overall it's just like that would had been the pattern of the business you know yeah Mm -hmm. and that was the i mean i did get you know i did get screwed but whatever like it's just like that was the pattern and now like i feel like i'm on a mission i also feel very like um what's it called uh called to dance and I want to stay here because I understand that I'm here for like the purpose of re redirecting people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's an amazing yeah. purpose as well. Yeah. You know, like when you don't see a lot of times when you don't see role models, especially yeah. or figures in that represent that you kind of have to create on your own. Right? Yeah. And that's kind of, totally. it's tough. We had Kahlo on here and she's talking about, you know, there are scars for breaking the glass ceiling, you know, and trying to, yeah. but oh, you know, Kahlo, but yeah. someone has to do that. Uh, yeah. In some ways, maybe you can help enlighten other yeah. people. Maybe. Many yeah. of us have to do it because it's, and it's tough. Yeah. It's very tough. Yeah. I feel like, I mean, yeah, it's been a consistent theme across the few guests that we've had that yeah. are also singers mm-hmm. and, the learning lessons that they yeah, have yeah. to share, the, the battle scars that yeah. you guys have to show. Yeah. I actually, I had a question. So yeah. I'm curious because of your rock background and mm-hmm. being in a band. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some of the pros and cons? Because I know a lot of people talk about this a lot too. What are some of the pros and cons you saw with being in a band and in a collective group, mm-hmm. creating music, having mm-hmm. that accountability, mm-hmm. or then going completely on your own? Mm-hmm. You know, because I think that there, there's just like, there's some people that work better in that group dynamic. Yeah. Or there's some people who can only really work on by themselves yeah i think when i was in a band i think it was a combination of a lot of things i think i enjoyed the group process but i really only liked to write with like maybe one person in the group Mm. you know what i mean like i think i liked the experience of the band like when Mm -hmm. you're like on stage and you can like look to your left guitar players rocking out (laughs) drummer put up dude like it's like (laughs) that part of it's cool but i think ultimately i was probably didn't know this but maybe made for dance music writing because it, mm. it's kind of you there are a lot of collaborations and now you know there's I'm, I'm in the studio with lots of different people but you can just like get a beat and then just like write over to it you know in 30 minutes and like it'd be done you know yeah so i mean i don't know i still crave like the band experience and i hope now that i'm completely in my solo artist era <laughs> I can create that in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. um It's hard to get a bunch you know. of people on the same page of commitment. Oh my right? goodness. <laughs> yeah. And there's different um talent levels too. Yeah. Even yeah. and you can only be as good. I, I also used to be a coach. Like I was a basketball coach. Mm. So oh, awesome. you know, I was very I was very much you can only be as good as your your weakest link. You know what I mean? Like was, <laughs> you gotta get your chops up. Like So was, you played <laughs> basketball too? Yeah. So you played basketball and you're in, in theater and you you're in a rock band. I mean yeah, oh yeah. I was person. in I yeah, the movie high school musical was based off my life. <laughs> I will say that. I'm not <laughs> I'm kinda kidding, but yeah, I actually I, I had a similar experience. Now that's funny because Athletics and arts are complete opposite yeah. opposing forces. Yeah. I'm sure you got a lot of crap from your coach or your... Oh, well, like... I wasn't... Well, they kind of, like, they didn't work together. They weren't together. Okay. Yeah, Um. because I played... I did musical theater. By the way, I wasn't overly a huge musical theater fan. Okay. Even yeah, though yeah, I yeah. did it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like, I actually didn't like it. Okay. So... Why didn't like, you like it? Because I thought it was cheesy. Mm. yeah but and even as a little kid we're not wrong yeah i know know. very valid (laughs) and even as a little kid i was just like why am i singing like this but i was just like (laughs) whatever i'm doing it you know yeah yeah Yeah. and then but then when i got into music you know like being an artist that's when i like i was like started to listen to corn and like insane clown posse and like just really crazy dark (laughs) damn you're really into you're into new metal I was like super emo and like uh. my mom's like why are you always playing like dark music because I was like we had a piano in our garage and I she's like why are you always playing some dark heavy music I was like I'm sad like, like, but I forgot yeah. what you asked but. no no I was just I was saying like because oh, when you have like sports. interests like that yeah. they're opposing in the yeah. ways like you know people don't think you can be both oh you know? yeah so what I was the musical theater thing I stopped doing that like at 10 okay or like mm. 10 or 11 and I went straight into basketball and like that took over my whole entire life like mm. sports I was on the swim team 
I played softball for a little while until I got hit in the face because oh. that's Oof. really that's <laughs> yeah that'll, 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 that'll yeah. stop things yeah I was like I'm over this um but yeah <laughs> went into basketball and played like varsity for three years and mm. you know like I thought I was gonna go to school to college to play basketball mm. nice and then like I sprained wow. my ankle really bad yeah wow oh. I was just you know that you know that it's like yeah, ankles are injured. the worst. Yeah, yeah. Ankles. yeah. Well, uh, my, I guess <laughs> my last question <laughs> <Fucking> about <laughs> ankles. <laughs> I throw them away. Fuck the ankles. I, know. I don't need them. Uh, my last question about sports was like, yeah. um, do you think that that's been like because you played sports? Do you yeah. think that's been instrumental in your life? Like, oh, yeah. you can apply that because I personally feel that I would want my kids or whatever. Yeah. And not not to be one of those crazy coaches. Yeah, but you almost want to put people in that setting because it simulates competition winning absolutely and, losing, and it kind yeah. of prepares you for life's challenges yes. in a way too do you feel the, like- the winning and losing and you know being knocked down and and uh getting back up mm-hmm. like yeah. literally you know especially in basketball every you know it's always resetting you're always like the next thing is really it's like volatile you know what i mean you're mm-hmm. constantly trying to make a hoop that you feel like you can never make but somehow we're just trying to get in that little hoop <laughs> it's like <laughs> so crazy yeah, it's yeah. crazy yeah. but you know yeah that absolutely pre- prepared me for what was to come, you know, especially, not, especially, you know, you're an artist and being emotional and sometimes your emotions can send you on a spiral. Yeah. And then, you know, I have that coach in me that's like, okay, just get back into it. Even mm-hmm. if it takes me a moment, you know, like I still like get back in the game, you know, whatever little coaching things that I have for myself, mm-hmm. you know, like, so mm-hmm. yeah, I, if I had a kid, they definitely would be. They'd be doing all the things: piano, <laughs> all the piano, things. straight to basketball, straight to whatever. But yeah, I also played rugby too. Okay. Whoa. Yeah, and that was probably the, you did all yeah. the sports. Yeah, yeah, I was wow. very. Active. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. that's yeah. a good that that's a good segue to talk yeah. about. Yeah, some of the. Yeah, because I was gonna say going back to kind of your musical journey. Mm-hmm. It sounds like it almost. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you describing it, it almost sounds like it was an easy choice for you to then just continue doing dance music after you had this first mm. session with Sunburn. But your oh, face no, is no, telling me not, differently no, right no, now. No, definitely not. Yeah, e- tell me it more. It wasn't easy. Yeah, yeah. I'm just giving you a lightweight version. Yeah. Uh, crystal <laughs> light the, version the heavy of... Version. Uh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely went through, like, my, uh, I guess, really depressed era oh, no. of, like, yeah, like, I guess n- not being fulfilled as an artist. Mm. That, that's number one. And then number two, not being seen for the the value you know yep. that you know i'm bringing not being able to have a full-blown career mm. you know i think that's also depressing because you just get in this rat race of like going to sessions and then nothing comes of it or, or it does and it's just like and this is like weird haggle negotiation thing negotiation process at the end and it's mm-hmm. just like um it, it could tear you, it starts to wear on you yeah you know and and I, I have had a really nice time and i'm not like shitting on anything at all yeah mm-hmm. i'm just saying like I will say it with Sunburn and like AC Slater and like a few others, I have been able to like go on the festival market and, yeah. and perform, which doesn't happen. That didn't happen a lot at all. Yeah. Mm. And we'll so, get to that. Cause I know yeah. AC Slater helped you, you oh, know, yeah. transition into oh, yeah. doing DJing and stuff Absolutely. too. But, yeah. yeah but. Um, so I will, I will say that I did have some, some like light and some yeah. good, some great moments that kind of, got me through yeah Yeah, that got me through and helped me like navigate but yeah i mean it's in 2021 i like literally had a nervous breakdown oh no (laughs) and i was gonna leave like oh my god 2021 we were talking about yeah 2021 yeah Yeah, like i had a i I had a i had a A tough year i had a nervous breakdown too yeah so you guys are basically the same i get it i get it i get it (laughs) i'm just kidding (laughs) <laughs> no wow no that, you guys crazy. are like the same day the, yeah same day? Wait, uh, uh, november <laughs> but anyways yeah, yeah. anyways so, so yeah 2021. so what was the so uh, yeah, yeah i mean well because i you just, can explain to someone who's listening what that yeah, the yeah, nervous yeah, breakdown yeah what that experience oh is like, you um know, for, or, yeah it was like around my birthday and i think I, I had been doing quite a few tracks i can't remember what was out at the time um but just like if I think a few things like set me off, but I uh, I, I was it was building, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And like somebody called me and told me that they were just gonna like put some track out without even asking me, and then mm-hmm. that same day like it was like someone did put a track out without asking oh, me. Oh God! So it was just like yes. that combined with all the stuff over the years, I suppose. Kind of, it, I just lost it. I remember I was actually mm-hmm. on my like my birthday trip, and like I went, I was in the woods, 
Oh, no. And I got this call and I just had to go sit. I was sitting on like a stump. And I was just rocking back. <laughs> like God, literally yeah. losing it and spiraling. Like uh, I was just like, oof. I felt like, you know, when you're, you don't have a, like your brain feels like it busts or something. It feels like it, yeah. it, felt like it did that. Because well, it's know? so out of your control. But yeah. obviously your, your heart and soul is in yes, that. So yes. It's such a weird feeling. Yeah. And to be fair, it was for something I couldn't even remember that I sang. Also strange. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I Throw like listened to it and I was like, that doesn't even sound my voice. But I was like, I looked back at like, I think it was like 2015 when I recorded it. Mm-hmm. So it was like so far removed. I've, I, my voice sounds different. Like the way nice. I emote sounds, you know, everything. So I was just like, wow. But yeah, so that, that day I like, yeah, I lost it. And then I was like, I went back and I was like, something has to change. Mm. I was going to quit entirely and, and also move into um like pop because like, Mm. previously i mean i i didn't even share this part but i love pop music mm-hmm. love pop music i was obsessed um and so i also can write pop too so like i was like oh i'm just gonna write pop music or write like some indie style you know go back to something that feels more authentic to me i guess mm. yeah i mean it, it's all authentic but i'm just saying something that's not dance you know yeah because i different. felt so hurt by it mm. so um yeah and I don't know. I don't really know. It's a, it was just more. I had gotten Dex, gotten Dex or whatever, a controller. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was doing a few shows as myself, or just just Kalina. Yeah. And the oh, I, I don't even know. Now this is when you're like, oh, should I say that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> all I know is there was a moment in which I stopped taking the DJ around because yeah, it it was a it was a break another breaking point another yeah. moment that was like, girl, you just do this yourself, you know what I mean? So. I I started DJing and practicing every single day and just just like I was like I can press play on my own playlist. I have so many songs yeah, now. Like yeah, yeah. I I can definitely curate a set. My brain was just like you know let me just begin this journey, yeah. and because it was either that or I was gonna quit and just lose lose it. I was gonna oh spiral gosh. into a whole different way that yeah. I didn't want to go. I mean I feel like that's yeah. such a good example of like you have to hit. Sometimes you have to hit a rock bottom in yeah. order to like enter into something new that that serves you. Yeah. And it sounds like that's a good way of you coming out of that dark moment. Definitely. Because yeah. I, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that was a big one we wanted to talk about of mm-hmm. like you making that decision to mm-hmm. take it back in your own hands and not only do the singing, but also do the mm-hmm. DJing. Mm-hmm. And so and that was around 20 or like yeah, the end it of was, 2021. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It was then. And um, it also feels yeah. like it wasn't just like this one catastrophic life thing that led to it it's mm-hmm. like a, just a piling oh, up yeah. of little things right oh yeah and that's kind of i i in my experience it was a similar and and i think that that's one of the stigmas or myths that kind of needs to be debunked is oh, that yeah. like people have a nervous breakdown because it's like you know it can happen that way like something yeah. really bad happens in your life but it's usually it's just, accumulation of a yeah. lot of things yeah yeah because yeah, like i you don't expect it to just flip that switch out, no. out of nowhere. You know? Yeah. I didn't even think it was possible for me to have a nervous breakdown, to be honest. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like I was, I'm very strong and I think I'm very like mentally, I, I mean, I'm, I'm wild, you know, but like, I definitely don't ever think about going to the crazy land. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? <laughs> like, I, like, I'm just like, I'm not trying to go there, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I, that's not who I am. So it's just yeah. like, I didn't think it was even possible for me to like have a place where my mind just, didn't exist <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah well i also think it's important yeah. because it's like it's an interesting phase and we again this comes up every once in a while in different shapes and forms with mm-hmm. the many artists that we've had where being an artist is so hard because it's mm-hmm. like you have to be a little crazy to pursue music yep. because it's going to be really difficult yep. and it's like such a part of you mm-hmm. and then like i i find it so fascinating you telling us that story because it's like for people from the outside looking into your career on that time, like mm-hmm. big things were happening oh, yeah. for you. Like yeah, really nice. your music yeah. was on, in a commercial, commercial in the Super Bowl right, and like right. on like the Olympics, right? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. these are things that an artist probably dreams of or like right. doesn't even know that they can dream of that. Right. And so it's like important for someone like you to explain that like th- big things can happen, but you can also be, you know, looking to oh, find yeah. yourself as an artist oh, my and God, having yes. those tough times. Yeah. And that's okay. Yep. And it's it's going to be okay if you like yeah. get yourself through it sort of yeah. thing. So, and that must have been an interesting one for you too, where like all getting, that stuff, getting yeah. myself through it because then it's like, you know, you have to reevaluate everything you've been doing and then assess, you know, what's been making you happy. Mm. And then also the drawing boundaries with whatever whatever that was making you unhappy. And sometimes it's cutting out, like, people. Mm. Not cutting them out, like, in, like, 
you don't ever talk to them, not in a bad way, but just you have to draw that boundary because it's that your habits are going that have been going a certain direction. Yeah, I mean, I, I, habits. I call it keeping people at arm's length. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I, I think that you, depending on your personality and maybe you share some of these qualities, but you mm. could let someone in too much. But you don't, you don't have, yeah. you're not taking care of you first. Yes. Before you can let people in. Yeah. So you're just, you're just exhausting your bandwidth. Yes. I'd be trying to be empathetic. Yeah. Cause like one of the things I learned is that empathy is not necessarily a good thing. You know, like mm. I think we see it as a positive thing yeah. in our, in our society. People mm -hmm. are seeing practice empathy, but I've learned that like compassion is like a, a, a little bit better. Yeah. If, if we're going to be like a little more specific, cause you take care of yourself first yeah. and you can like assess and help people without letting it affect you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, like, empathy. Yeah. Sorry. I did have a lot of um, empathy. I mean, I still do, but it can be draining if you're yeah. like too in tune with everybody's emotions and everybody's aware, like you're aware of everything in the, in the room. Yeah. You know what I mean, I think that's kind of like what I was doing is like, just taking on and then yeah. you know, other people's projects and always working on their things. And it's just like, yeah, you know, I was kind of like fading into this. Like I didn't know who, I, where I was. Right. You know? Well, yeah. I think that's, I mean, that's a great way to kind of explain it. Cause I think your position in dance music and in just music in general can be so like community based, but yeah. like you lose your sense of self and oh, yeah. sometimes too. Definitely. So I think you taking, you know, DJing into your own hands oh is like such it's a good so step. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us more about how oh, it's been to like yeah. learn and perform. Absolutely. Dude, nerve wracking. Why I'm did sure. I become? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also, okay. In the beginning when I started practicing, like I would just like put little videos online just as like a funny, cause I thought it was funny that like, you know, I'm like, I'm a singer and I'm DJing. Uh, like I really <laughs> thought it was just like kind of jokes. And then. I know I started getting a little better. I was like, oh, wait, this is fun. And then yeah. I'm like, why wasn't I doing this the whole time? And like, now I understand why all these DJs love it because they're just like, one, two, three. And everyone's just like, ah! <laughs> like, what? It's like, it's so simple. Yeah. You know, yes. It's not rocket yeah, science. No it is simple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not it's, rocket it's science. It's simple. Yeah. And, and obviously, to be a, depends on what kind of DJ you, know, yeah. you want to be. Yeah. And that's something that I'm learning now, too. It's like, am I a DJ? And what, I, what am I? What what's my existence in the space and yeah I just I'm an artist you know mm -hmm. and I I see it as like the DJ DJing is my instrument to play my songs and to share my the experience you know mm -hmm. so like if I'm you know if I have the sorry the sync button on whatever did whatever <laughs> fucking did whatever did <laughs> like I'm trying to like have an experience with people yeah yeah and. And Trust me, a lot more people use sync than, than I know, people. and I've been seeing it. <laughs> so don't like, come for me. Going on, don't so. come for me. Uh, <laughs> listen, Mitch, can you put on a show? <laughs> like, no. But um, uh. no, like I. But I also do really love DJing, like the art of DJing. I, I love, yeah. you know, mixing, spinning, and like picking out records and like creating a language. And and I actually got to know more about myself because of mm. it. And like. And I understood dance music in a different way, too. How so? Well, like, now I understand why they're only asking for one or two lines. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm going to give it to you, but I just under I yes. understand, like, why yes. yeah, yeah. that, like, oh, it's because, like, club. I mean, I you know, it's like when you're participating it and you're, like, at the club and you're listening to it, yes, you know that's what you're hearing. But, like, mm -hmm. when you're, like, DJing, now even in my own things, and I do sing in my sets, like, probably 80% of the time, but now I – but I can – I don't sing like the whole entire thing, you know, mm -hmm. like I'll just have like my track and like it'll, and it enhances what I'm doing, but not like, not like, you know, full, unless there are tracks where I like fully sing, but then I go out to the front and I'm like singing, you know, mm -hmm. um, but it's just like, I get it. I, it's like, I had a huge aha moment about dance, dance music and then mm -hmm. I'm like, I love it. You know, I love it even more. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. And it, really you know, great. dance music, I think. And DJing and dance music, it is simple, and I don't think that's like a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like we, well, yeah, because like DJing dance music, the the art is simplicity and and restraint a lot of times. Because when you're DJing hip hop, mm. you most of the songs have a chorus verse chorus structure. You have to know the song. You mm -hmm. have to know when like the vocals are coming in and out. A yeah. lot of times on chorus, you don't want to mix vocals over each other. Yeah, true. There's all these like subtle nuances to hip hop DJing and like the traditional mm. art of DJing. Mm -hmm. I think dance music kind of removes but not in a bad way yeah you yeah know, where it's like i think it opens the bar of, um it lowers the bar of entry but it opens it up to more creativity yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. and i just see the way that 
I guess I'm also looking at like dance music and other artists. And I'm like, what are they doing? It's like ultimately they're trying to build a relationship with the audience. And if you can seamlessly do that, however it looks on, on here, yeah. then I think that's the most important part. Like, you get you you know if I was a tech house bro you get all your tech house songs and you just tech house tech house the audience and they're just like tech house you know what I mean but that's your language you know but like mine is <laughs> mine is singing and with you know dance music but it's a kind of a variety an eclectic you know variety mm-hmm. just because I've been I love a lot of different music you know I come from rock come from pop you know so like I like a lot of it but I I just call myself. I call myself main stage. <laughs> you call yourself main, main stage? stage? Yeah. Like I've organized myself like, like, you know, at a festival, who am I? Main stage. I'm a main stage artist. <laughs> and that's important. It's yeah. important to know who you are and what yeah. you enjoy. Because yeah. I think, I mean, so much of DJing is not only obviously all the stuff that you just listed out, but also like, it's so much better when the DJ is having a good time. Yeah, you know, like absolutely. The crowds are yeah. attracted to that. Nobody That's what wants I was to thinking. See a DJ, like yeah. struggling to like yes. make something work, and you're like, yeah. oh, they're, they're not having a good time. Yeah, right yeah. There, they're just know? like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fidgeting exactly. with their yeah. honestly, I love me like a good French artist who's just like ripping a cig mm. and just like looking down disinterested while they're playing because mm. that's really cool too. But mm-hmm. I've noticed as I've gotten older, mm-hmm. um, I've kind of come back to like this pure point where I really like young artists who are smiling and happy mm-hmm. jumping around and, and are yeah. like crowd control on the crowd mic control, yes. is really important yeah. mm-hmm. I was raised in like you know in the late 2000s when I got into DJing it was very gate kept mm-hmm. a lot of old heads yes they were like don't look up at the crowd don't get on the mic the DJs weren't really supposed to get on the mic right it was tacky mm-hmm. you weren't supposed to look at your laptop if you're using Serato oh, yeah. you're supposed to put it down and mm-hmm. pretend like you weren't mm-hmm. using the software mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway but there was a whole etiquette to it you know mm-hmm. now I've kind of like I'm like forget all that mm-hmm. What's your engagement with the audience? In mm-hmm. this day and age, it's almost one of the most important things. More it, important than being good at DJing, honestly. If, yeah. You know, yeah. It no, it's true. Like, um, especially, I will say, because social media, right? Like, mm. people, if you're, like, putting clips up and stuff, like, I feel like that's changed the layout, too. Because it's, like, you want to look, not that you're thinking about social media, but you want it wants you want it to be, like, well, You, you want to have fun. a moment. Yeah, yeah, a moment. Yeah. Yeah, and, if, and that's, all, that's also helping you, as an artist, grow your brand and creating interest you know with other with people so it's like you gotta also it's really fun like what the hell like why are <laughs> yeah, people it smiling makes, anyway, it makes you know people know be yeah, like yeah. i want to be at your next show yeah, because exactly it looks so fun yeah and, like such a moment yeah well you also said you learned stuff about yourself besides mm-hmm. just learning that you love new things about dance music yeah. what else did you feel like you learned about yourself um what did i learn about myself in the art of DJing. Mm, yeah. um, did you self, wow. were you self-taught uh, just off tutorials or did uh, people help you? Uh, people helped me, yeah. Okay. I I uh, had like two tutors, mm-hmm. tutors, <laughs> they're my friends. <laughs> I had two so tutors, they can be sorry. Tutors tutors as well. if, if you're, li- Christophe, if you're watching this, I don't know, please, Christophe. I'm sorry. Shout out Christophe. <laughs> yeah, shout out Christophe, Nick, everybody. A- actually, yeah. everybody. I, I feel everybody from the community was really supportive yeah. Yeah. in me. Um, making that jump and mm-hmm. they really did show me everything that they could possibly show me. Mm-hmm. And then like I did watch a few YouTubes just in the in term and then just practice. I think that was once you know you know whatever then you just keep practicing until you know you get it right. But, but did um, it unlock a kind of creative part of your brain that you hadn't accessed or is it um, similar to other things you've done? No, I mean so like kind of tying in what you said too like mm. um I just learned I learned that like to give myself more creative power and mm. to give myself like, um, cause I used to enjoy learning instruments all the time yeah. mm-hmm. and I kind of let that die a little bit. Mm. And, um, cause I, I mean, I can play a little bit of piano, guitar. I used to go to, Oh, when I went to music school, I would just cut class and play drums all the time. <laughs> I was a drum freak. Um, but yeah, it, it reminded, that's why I feel so good about it too. Cause it reminded me like yeah. I can be creative again and like, learn and not be stuck to just i'm the singer on the track like it's just like <laughs> yeah i it just feels invigorating and i and i forgot a lot of i forgot that i was that person who just enjoys like music and learning you know mm-hmm. well that's not i mean again i think another important thing because i do feel like that is a negative trope that people fall into right it's yeah. like you debut as an artist in some yeah. way or form and then you feel really locked into that yeah or people come to expect 
tracks but you're yes. only the vocalist yes. on the dance music tracks yes. but then like why can't you learn yeah. how to dj or produce or whatever it yeah. is that you want to do yeah so and then it's great to see that people have embraced that yeah for you as well yeah, yeah. and it got embraced so much that I got an agent. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Congrats. Yes. That yes. is a big Congrats. deal. Yeah. 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 How does that feel? Great. I yeah. mean, great because I've always saw myself as a performing artist. Yeah. You know, like, you know, very much, you know, I'm very, you know, commanding, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. out there. Like, so to me, this is that, like, gateway to, like, realizing all the things that, I could, that are possible. Yeah. And really, like, it forced me, it's forcing me to just, you know, attack my project and only that, mm -hmm. which is good because I am very open and I love to give and, you know, like I love to help people with their projects and like that actually is a little bit difficult for me to shut off a little bit and just mm -hmm. like focus only on myself. That is really hard for me to do. Um, but I, when I, but I'm seeing the results and yeah. that, and the results are, that people like what I'm doing, the audience likes what I'm doing. So like, I'm like, okay, cool. Like this is, it feels right. And it feels like mm -hmm. that's, I'm literally supposed to be performing. So mm. I think the DJing has allowed me to take dance music and create the career that I'm looking for. You've taken some of the power back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. 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 That's good. I mean, because you know, when we talk to vocalists a lot of times or people within this industry that are specialists in, in a way mm -hmm. and not those like front and center artists, because I think a lot of those like um, distinctions are getting kind of eroded. Like people are just not. You don't have to be just a DJ producer. Yeah. Just this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think people are a lot more open minded to it yes. now. So that's that's Thank important God. that you've yeah. seen the, the the benefit of that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and I think it's cool because it's like one of those. I mean, in music nowadays, there's not that many roles or or types of artists that you haven't seen all the different like ways their career can play out mm -hmm. yet. But I do feel like. The, the area that you, you sit in like as a vocalist mm -hmm. who is touching different parts of music like there's so many options like yeah. even the few people we've had on the podcast so far like everyone's kind of chosen a different route but mm -hmm. it's cool to see that like there are that many ways you can go yeah like as a vocalist you think yeah, yeah like yeah, i think as someone music, who yeah. like maybe comes in at first you're like i am a vocalist but mm -hmm. it's not like i'm only a vocalist right. like i yeah. can do other things i'm interested in other things well yeah. it's also kind of a, a more of a macro culture thing where it's like i think uh with identity you know we get we want to we kind of get boxed into like what's in oh, our yeah. instagram bio mm -hmm. like you oh, know my God. dog lover <laughs> uh, mine says edm vegan. whoopi gold or no it says edm <laughs> oprah so i mean i'm never boxed in I'm, let's go i'm like trying to touch the world like yeah. I'm out there. no it's true but it's also like you can kind of always have a second act or a whole yeah. new reinvention of yourself like yeah you know when i because I, I i think the younger generation is way more open-minded than oh we, my God. we give them credit for yes. like yes. about stuff like that like for instance and this is probably a really bad example, but like the Logan, Logan and Jake Paul, like oh literally my. content creators. <laughs> okay. Wait, hold on. Hear me out. I know I get it. I already Merchandise, know. <laughs> like sort of like, yeah, entrepreneur, like Kings. And then this dude, Jake Paul's a rapper. And now they're like both like very successful boxers and fighters, like oh, insane. Random. But like everyone is kind of just down and like, but, but like, but they, it's not, it's not strange anymore. Yeah. In, in the back in the day, mm -hmm. this would have been literally like, carnival level like theatrics like people would have mm -hmm. never ever yeah. legitimized it mm -hmm. logan paul is like crushing in the wwe now mm -hmm, and yeah. like people are just they're they're earnestly into it which is kind of really i, I mean i'm it. not they're not necessarily the the figures that are a good example but i mean that's just like that's just what it is like we're in yeah. this kind of era now where i you love can it do anything yeah, you can you do like that. you can do multiple things yeah yeah yes, that too that you can do yeah. multiple things mm -hmm. i I do want to act, so I'm glad the oh. union, oh. union, union Let's is talk about that. To, yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, do you have, uh, besides the, your work in theater, like mm -hmm. had, had you gone out on auditions when you came out here um, or tried to break in? Like very little. Like I did um, like commercial stuff. Like I did, uh, I was in the Guinness commercial. I'm a Guinness commercial. You were in a Guinness <laughs> Yeah, I was in a Guinness commercial. Love it. Yeah, yeah. How many auditions did you, how many calls did you go on before you Oh, literally, that? like, hardly any, but. Okay. Oh, so pretty <laughs> early on. Yeah. Pretty early. yeah. No, like, none. But um, I just, it was just something, it's an avenue that I've wanted to take, and, like, I did, I have taken acting classes, taking commercial workshops. Yeah. But next year's goal is to consistently take, now that I've, like you said, the world is full of possibilities. Yeah. Now I understand that, and I'm ready to embrace that part of me instead of just being, oh, maybe like I'm gonna take like acting classes next year, 
right. you, know, you have to layer it on. You can't just do everything at one time. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, next year and then see how far I can go. But not to give, not giving up anything with music, but yeah. just I want to have that layer. Like maybe there's an option. Because, okay, I feel like, um, like movies and TV shows, they really like artists, like, like, um, more music more. artists. Yeah. Like, what's that guy's name? Um, mm, Ludacris. Uh, <laughs> honestly, he was a, he was one of my. He's an OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, honestly. Yes. Well, because we we saw him at Hard Summer, and I think like I mean half the crowd obviously grew up with him, but yeah, half the yeah. crowd knows him as the Fast and Furious guy. I mean, I know. That's, that's... I know. Well, I, I used. To... Whoa, he could rap. Like you know, there's some kids there that were like, whoa. Like, unfortunately, know? they stopped the. They stopped the. I think they stopped the series or whatever the whole franchise, right? I think they did their last the movie. Fast and Furious. Ones? Yeah, they did. I mean, they've they've That's done it? quite yeah. a few. So. Well, I used <laughs> to want to be it's about on time. it, so I think they stopped. So <laughs> I was visualizing that and manifesting that, and now I can't. So hey, I hey, there's no know. universe where they won't potentially bring something. Sure, back trust me. The you know? They already so. have one spinoff. They're going to have other yeah. ones. Don't worry. You can well, make it. You'll get your chance. Okay, fair. Well, all I know is that like Euphoria, Euphoria, yeah, like things like that. Like I know that they really like um musicians, musicians, yeah, and artists. Oh yeah. The weekend had his show. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Oh. But well, I mean, let's oh. not talk about that. That's not good. <laughs> Chad is full of bad examples today. Uh, Logan but, Paul, the weekend. Uh, oh my god. No, but, but you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not something I will. I'll never ever stop doing music and building. But I definitely want to have that as an option. And right. You know. You know. Yeah. Well, I feel like again, it's like the only thing you can do is just try. Yeah. yeah. Like I feel like it's kind of a generational thing because I feel yeah. like I have I have this thought process in my head all the time where like our generation for some reason was kind of traumatized to be afraid to be cringe mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and like everything yeah, just, you do it on it's gonna yeah. be on the internet forever and like yeah. you're gonna have to live with that forever but yeah. like you get to a certain age or era in your life where you realize like if you don't be bad at something you can never be good at something Truly. right like yes. you have to just give it a shot and try yeah. it so but that fear is loud it's so I, loud, yeah, but like, look at you—you yeah. you, like oh, have yeah. oh. unlocked this whole new part of your artist career because yeah. you decided you <laughs> like it was worth it to try. Yeah, yeah and I'm yeah. sure you weren't great in the beginning. Wait, yeah, no. do you do you feel like people are more afraid of being cringe now though? Because of like the perpetual everything. No, but I feel like it's a thing that I don't even want to say generationally because I feel like even younger kids are going through it right now. Where like it's a conversation where like mm-hmm. we're almost retraining ourselves to like not judge other people or be mean to other people for like Mm. trying and like being Mm. cringe like there's another bad example i'll give a bad example (laughs) on tiktok there's like this new trend right of this girl called tube girl oh yeah about this where she's just filming herself dancing and like feeling herself and it's such a silly thing it's like a cute like young girl doing her thing but it's like I'm noticing the trend that she's sparked is that it's just encouraging other people who are yeah. like really afraid to make a scene yeah. or really afraid to be the center of attention. Yep. Try and do something. And like mm-hmm. that's such a like small scale version of it because like yeah. really you're just making a TikTok video. Yeah. But like it's a good example, right? It's mm-hmm. like you see someone else doing that on the train and instead of being like, oh, lame, like you just kind of are like, cool, like whatever. They're mm-hmm. just making a funny video. Like that's yeah. fine. But, if that uh, makes them happy, like why not? Yeah. I feel like social media has kind of made it okay to be cringe yeah yeah like for better or for worse yeah right? <laughs> yeah and like it does give you like confidence and you know inspire other people to be to be confident and and it might come from an uh, egotistical way in a way but like yeah. i think it's honestly like i just went on a deep dive of the tube tube girl and i was like <laughs> should i be trying that <laughs> you're like should i do this yeah i was like wait a minute <laughs> i think you should i think kalina for sure should do a tube girl version whatever version it is I want to talk more about yeah. your music, which, of yeah. course, despite all this other exciting stuff that is up in the air, yeah, you have some great music that recently came out. You yes. went on tour. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about all of that? Yes. And you're making new music as well. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. Um, so speaking of um, a huge champion for my journey, yes. AC Slater. Yes. He, I, I just recently went on tour with him, and it was incredible. Like. He has the best fan base. They're they're very like excited, mm-hmm. so dedicated. And, yeah, dedicated yeah. and um, really welcoming. You know, so and night I love base for the the listeners. Night base, yeah, night, night base, base night base is a label. great community that he's built, and it was so wonderful to be for that to be like. I think that was my first. Oh no, that was my oh that's my second tour, but Doctor Fresh was the first one. That was great too. I'm yeah, no, dis- yeah. I'm not no dis- shout out, yeah, shout yeah. out Doctor Fresh. No, Doctor well. Fresh yeah. is oh, okay. Two different things. Whatever. He <laughs> also blew my mind. But 
Okay, Wait, so how so? Because he's so good. I mean, okay. I feel like you know, our all of our taste levels of they grow, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like he's a part of a culture like bass music. It it's still thriving, but only a few people are able to like keep it going. Yeah. Because, you know, it's just everything changes. Yep. But he is a a wizard. Like he's so good at like DJing and creating like you know, a symphony of like EDM sounds mm. that are really, really hard. Like he'll take it down to like, you know, one, you know, 14 and then we're up to drum and bass. And it's just like, mm. he really, he's a master. Mm-hmm. He's a master. At, uh, he's a doctor. Okay. <laughs> he got his PhD. He's a freaking I no, doctor. I do, I do agree. And that's because, yeah. uh, that's because Dr. Fresh came from, um, you know, along, like he, he, he was a he was DJing frats and yes. parties and he yeah, yeah he's had seen to it learn. all in the party yeah, he's circuit. got he's the open so... format you know and uh, and his skills. his uh, personality and his person and like he is like a, he's a plus an a yeah. plus person yeah yeah and AC yeah. um we, we I just have known AC a little bit more you know because we've done several tracks together mm-hmm. so yeah so he took me on tour it was amazing and I learned a lot about. That more about what I want to do in the language of music, how I want to be a conduit with mm. w- whatever sounds, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, what was a valuable lesson that you learned on these tours? On the tours, uh, at least, also because you're DJing, pacing myself and not drinking so much. <laughs> that is one. an important <laughs> lesson. That is, yeah, very real. We've heard very many real. an artist, yeah, learn and live that lesson. Oh, oh my god, <laughs> tours, of these tours were, hard. Yeah, yeah. they, they weren't bus a, tours though. No, right? not okay. bus tours. Yeah. Touring is hard. For yeah, sure. touring yeah. is is unique. It, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. But you do have to like be healthy, drink water. You know, yeah. get those green juices. Like, can't eat like burgers. Like, it's a real. It's like a. It's a sport. It's a sport. Mm-hmm. It's literally a sport. Yeah. So that's how I'm treating a, it. Yeah. yeah, you got to condition. Oh, yeah. Very long you... marathon. <laughs> oh yeah, and even AC last year, I think it was in December. I did a few dates with him uh, for New Year's, and he was like, and I drank so much, like I was like. I was like mm. guzzling alcohol, and then and it was it was New Year's, and then he was yeah. like he's like you know you might want to like cut back like you know as you move forward, and I was like oh I'm probably fine. <laughs> he's like some got this. some some fatherly wisdom from yeah. a man who's been touring yeah. for a long time, <laughs> and he wasn't he wasn't wrong. So, but have yeah. you always been kind of like a life of the party? You could throw it back and kind oh, of stuff like this. Completely listening I can... to Corn and oh, Luther Vandross. Look at me! Look at me! <laughs> Both at the same time, like, <laughs> like, it's like what? Um, no, I, yeah, I definitely can, I can hang. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a good drinker. That's a, it's a great, it's like a, it's, it's a great thing and a terrible thing, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I'm not, a, I'm not a like bad drunk too. I can like laugh and like, yeah, yeah. I can like black out and have full blown conversations. It's like, no, crazy. I'm sure people, I yeah. mean, you, you, you have this energy that like, yeah. draws people towards you. That's you know, good. I can That's attest. Good. That's good. That's good. Many a backstage, but anyway. Um, so you were on yeah, this tour. So these on tours the tour, and, and um, yeah, AC's been great, and then um, he's really championing, championing. Cha- I didn't know that's the word. How do you say it? Championing. championing. Oh, <laughs> it's a tough one. Exactly. So um, for for not just me, but he sees that vocalist. You know, do sometimes get the short end of the stick. So mm-hmm. I'm doing a whole EP on night bass. Um, and he's executive produced like most of it. So like, or overseeing A and R he's doing, he's very involved in the whole wow. entire thing. So, um, yeah, nightmares, um, produced with also Nick and coil and Pennywild. We, we got into, it's really like deep, heavy. I was going to say, I listened to it and it's very fun. Yeah. Good. Yay. Yeah. Okay, it's good. very fun. Yeah. Good, good, I yeah. like that your personality is all over it. Yeah. 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 Good, good. Yeah. 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 And then I kind of like, exploring a bit more with um this ep because i'm also i'm signed to helix as a whole helix records um mm-hmm. like my that's my like my main label nice where i'm doing congrats thank you on that. thank you that's yeah awesome. and that's more like a way that i'm able to like flex kind of both pop and dance in a way yeah. you know so but in, with the night bass um ep I, I feel like i'm able to i've been able to explore like more i don't know just quirky like r&b ish but like with bass house like cool. yeah it's really cool and like ac's been very open to just allowing me to be me which i think is like what i've needed mm-hmm. yeah so, absolutely i mean yeah. i feel like that's such a rare 
instance to have mm-hmm. like the freedom to just try whatever you want and know yeah. that someone's going to support you yeah. through yeah. that. Yeah. And also that his really dedicated night based fans are already really familiar with you yeah. and like willing yeah. to go along that ride with you too. Yeah. So that's going to be really, really cool to see it come yeah. out. I'm, I'm very excited. And um, yeah. Clank is one of Clank. He's a night base. Yeah. Yeah. He's been, he's one of the producers on it. Nice. Um, Neon Steve, uh, we did some like quirky little thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just overall, I just I'm happy to be putting like out bodies of work. Yep. That, that are mine. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Not like mine, meaning like you know uh, my my name and my vision. I suppose you know. Yeah. Right. Um. You know, we all collaborate, so it's like working with producers and writers. But, um, yeah, it's it's nice to be, have like my own home in the music. But in the yeah. collaboration side, you've had a lot of success oh, too, right? Yeah. You had a song yeah. that went number one on the oh, yeah. dance charts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Tell us about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that it went number one on the U.S. dance charts. Everybody, hey. yeah. um, it's vibration with with shift key. Uh, that that song specifically came out on Helix, but that is a, one of those songs that I knew like as soon as like I left the session, I was like, this is just that song. You know, mm. that's the song. It's good feeling. My most favorite song that I've ever done. Ooh, awesome. and favorite child yeah it is it's my my favorite child. <laughs> well yeah it's my favorite and it 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 really is exactly like the kind of person like i am in a song mm, yeah. you know i'm curious or, whatever you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, the song's yeah. a person that's me like, that, so that's so that's really awesome okay because yeah. that's rare because we mm. We often hear about artists who like their favorite song they've ever made mm-hmm. never got the it's reception like an they were. Oh, song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how how did it feel that a song that you felt like embodied so much of yourself also was received the best out of all the music you made? My So I I did like like fight a little bit for the song, you know, to mm-hmm. make sure that it ha- kept its same integrity. So I like when all of it happened I was kind of like you don't I didn't feel anything not that not I was just shook mm. you know I mm. was like I knew it was a good song and this is exactly what I wanted but like it happening I just <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought yeah yeah no honestly like who would have thought and yeah. and it's that much more rewarding because I could also say I told you so. <laughs> oh my gosh, the best feeling ever. I told you it was a good song. <laughs> well, also, I, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. you've had a couple songs really mm. hit milestone markers that mm. signify that they reach people in mm-hmm. like a really big way. Like we yeah. kind of talked about it earlier. You had a song earlier in your career mm-hmm. that was chosen as like a soundtrack for a commercial in the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, that was the uh, Winter Olympics and the Super Bowl at the same time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which in the song's name Stronger is Stronger Than I Ever Been. And it's yeah. such a good anthem. Yeah. It sounds like almost like you wrote it to be that in right. those opportunities. Yeah. That's how well it fit. Mm. And then I know you have another song that was picked up for a soundtrack as well recently, right? Oh, that so that one is the same. Vibration got picked up for the EA Sports okay. uh, uh, FC, FC 24, yes. which yeah. is apparently a really big deal. It is a very yeah. big, video very game. big deal. Very, yeah. very big. And also, who, whoever curates those uh, <laughs> soundtracks is is awesome. He's doing a yeah. great job. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so. yeah, and I just think that's such a cool thing to point out about your career too is that like your songs are reaching people mm-hmm. in like a really wide reaching way yeah yeah so yeah. like what's that experience been like i mean the olympics um, and super bowl one must have been wild to see that uh okay so it, it's kind of it's kind of a weird like deep thing i suppose i don't know it's mm-hmm. i feel like so I didn't really set out to be like an artist and I'm going to be a singer and I'm going to, you know what I mean? But like I said before, it just something that happened naturally. So I feel like whatever like universe godly thing, like I feel that that is really present in the gift that I've been given. Cause I'm, it feels like it's literally, I'm the conduit. Here's the voice. Boom. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And I feel like I'm definitely like here for that purpose. Yeah. And so like, Hearing my songs, well, I actually haven't really heard my songs on the radio, but knowing that they've been on the radio or knowing that they've been reached on millions of countries, or millions, how many countries do we have? <laughs> millions. Millions of countries. Millions of people in countries. Across the stratosphere. <laughs> <laughs> in the Milky Ways. Um, no, but knowing that they they have reached people, yeah, like, mm-hmm. you know, that is, I feel that is, like, good. I'm doing my job. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, like, good. I'm, I'm, I'm 
I don't know. It, it's it's crazy. It's a crazy feeling. It, it's beautiful. And I hope, I think, with, with like, honing in my artist stuff, mm. like, I hope to continue to be that, but just have it more, like, to, in tune with the person that I am, too. Because, like, a lot of the songs that, like, you know, the, the features and, like, creating songs for, you know, licensing or something, like, those haven't necessarily, they are me, but, like, they may not be the most, like, tuned version of me you know yeah. mm-hmm. so, which i'm so thankful for all of it like it, of course yeah. it's, they all like lead to something they all lead to like this knowing or they all lead to like um some sort of security and knowing what you're supposed to do you know that's great yeah yeah because you are making new music now right yeah, besides yeah. the ep that's going to come out in october yeah you're... yeah oh my god yeah i went to london <laughs> um yeah. in the last like month and going there i was really nervous and i was just hoping that yeah, I would get something good, but I ended up getting, a, a, a like a plethora of good stuff. Wow! And I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, I actually got more honest with these sessions than I had previously. Like I was like saying real things that were actually going on, yeah. not like a general. Yeah, it was good. I've ne- I don't think I've ever really done that too much in a session. Wow! Like sharing like my real experiences and then them directly going into the music. Mm. It was like it was crazy. It's like painting. It was like. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Do you have like rituals in your writing process or does mm. it just kind of come out of nowhere and um, it's a little more abstract? Well, I I write in the morning, like get up and journal cuz that helps focus your your mind. Mm-hmm. Um honestly throughout the day like things will just come to me like little like ideas or um like titles will come to me and then like I'll start to like write backwards, you know what mm-hmm. I mean, or like write down a bunch of notes and then Lately, I've been collaborating with a lot of writers, so it's been that's been awesome because you know then your your um it just your mind expands, your imagination your imagination expands, mm-hmm. and so um yeah, no, I don't know if it's a real process, but I think it's just the habit of always like writing. But they're writing know? for you, right? Yeah, oh yeah, and yeah, that's the that's the, like yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah. a new thing. That right? is very yeah, that's that's kind of awesome. Yeah, and I'm always like. Is that okay? I don't know why I'm asking that. You guys, you guys like that? Like it's just like I'm so used to defaulting to the room. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're like, and they're like, it's your song. And I'm like, ah, yes, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. My that's song. right. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, it's exciting. It is really exciting. Yeah, I, I, I really feel like I've found a fresh space. You know? Yeah. Yeah, a fresh like attitude and yeah, and I just want it to last. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. I can only imagine that once you hit the good feeling of realizing that like you can be yourself in mm-hmm. your music and then mm-hmm. you can also produce great things and people mm-hmm. resonate with that that like yeah i feel like it's not hard to stick with that yeah after no, you yeah. found it it's just yeah, hard yeah. to get there right? yeah yeah it is yeah yeah and and i think for me it's like not wanting to disappoint people and i didn't even know i had that mm. and i didn't even know that was inside of me i i because i always see myself as like really like strong and cool like you know like <laughs> I, I i'll say anything you know but i was like i actually am like a little vulnerable little baby who's yeah. like are, are you guys good like <laughs> like what <laughs> oh yeah. i'm like i have dreads and shit like yeah like i'm supposed to be hard <laughs> See, this is what i meant yeah, in the very yeah. beginning when yeah. i said i think there's so much about you that's very powerful but at the same time you have like a very gentle energy mm-hmm. and like that's also i can tell why people like collaborating with you and oh, working good. with you because awesome. like I don't know. Those are the kind of people you keep around. So we we can end on that. Please, really yeah, please keep note. me around. Yeah, come come back again. You, yeah. you want to come back on the next person's episode? Yeah. You just sit in. No, but Kalina, I'm so excited for you. Thank you. I'm excited for the new music to come out. Thank we'll keep you. an eye out for the EP in yes. October. Oh yeah, and I have shows coming. And tell yeah. us more about the shows. Um, I'm going on a few dates with Disco Lines. Nice. Which is I'm Very really fun. excited for. He's awesome. We yeah. also play similarly, like eclectic and cool. So I'm just trying to align myself with more artists who do kind of don't fit in a box. You know? Yeah. And that's yeah. why I call it main stage because like main stage like artists they play anyone. Yeah. 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 Um, and then I'm also what am I doing? You're doing the shrine with oh, thank uh, you. Side <laughs> See, God's got it. Yes. That's yes, a big one. I am, yes. Oh my god. Yeah. I'm already like planning the whole entire thing. And when is that? Uh, November 10th. And awesome. uh. There's going to be a little surprise. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. All that's right. all I could say. All, right, all you can that's do is go yeah. and see what it is. Yeah. Well, we will be there. And, oh, good. Uh, yes. We're excited to, yeah. Uh, yeah, to see, see you at the shrine. Yeah. Thank that's you. Really Thank you for yeah. having me. Of, of course. course. Thank you for stopping Thank you. by yeah. at uh, Icon Collective Music Production School. Thank you, Jose, for 
doing the darn thing back there. And uh, thank you, Valerie. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Thanks, Kalina. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks Valerie.